which example, in go back and going back to R. So here's my Scottish example. What I've got here is the uh, observed uh, mortality divided by the expected mortality, which is the standardised mortality ratio. I don't have any covariates here that I'm using. Um, what I'm going to show you is um, models for the data which are often known as spatial smoothers. So they're basically shrinkage estimators, most of them. The idea is that you have a model which ends up giving you an estimate which tends to shrink uh, towards the global average across space. So it shrinks my mortality ratio to the global average. The amount of shrink shrinkage depends on my variation. So where I've got very low population, I'll have lots of shrinkage to the global average. Where I've got very high population, I'll have li little shrinkage because I've got low variation. Okay. So I'll show you a few methods for shrinkage. Uh, on the left-hand side, you've got a Poisson gamma shrinkage estimate. Then you've got a log normal, and on the right-hand side, a distribution free one that just depends on moments. Often these things smooth the process out. In this case, it's, it hasn't smoothed the process out. It's often done the opposite. Um, uh, but that's because it, it shrunk uh, the northern areas the most because they're the ones with low variation. And of course, you can't really see what's going on in the areas with high population. So here's some more examples. On the left, we've got the actual mortality ratio. Here again, I've got my distribution-free smoother. On the left, I've got another smoother. The difference with this one, on the, sorry, on the right, I've got another smoother. The difference with this smoother is it's actually a local smoother, okay, the one on the right-hand side. The other smoothers don't actually use the <coughs> geography of the space at all, because they're just shrinking to a global average. Whereas the one on the right-hand side is actually shrinking towards a local average, so just using the neighborhood. Point. So the one on the right hand side, you can see the behaviour is a bit different, particularly around the city areas. The one on the right hand side is actually a local smoother, and the, the one on the right hand side is actually using the neighbourhood links in the next plot. So I won't go on to my next example, I'll just say that for these sorts of aerial data you can do lots of modelling with covariates. Okay? Uh, depending on what the data is, you can use generalised linear models or GAMs or hierarchical models or whatever you like. You can also model uh, <coughs> spatial correlation that's left over in the residuals, a bit like you did with the geostatistical case. So, let me just say, I know these are fairly sort of well-known examples to, to some of you. Um, part of the difficulty of modelling these things is often getting the data in the first place. And often that might come from different sources, so you'll get the data corresponding to the geography, and then you'll get the actual data points for that geography, and then you've got to put, you've got to put them together. So, so the input issues are very important, but once you get to that stage, R is a very sort of powerful software for doing uh, spatial data analysis. And I certainly encourage you to look at your own data, if you have your own spatial data. Try and get them into R and have a play with them and see what you can do. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much. Well, it would be good to actually see a few articles to just get a feeling so that it would be easier to go back to my work and try it out. Have yeah, it's difficult because some of the R codes are quite... What I recommend for R code is that uh, you buy the book... Uh, the first author is Roger Bivand, and it's uh, something like Spatial Data Analysis in R. So I recommend you buy the book. In fact, a lot of these examples came from that book. So a lot of the code I used. So the, the, for the aerial data, the, the aerial data that you gave, that's using the package SPDEP? Yeah, SPDEP, that's the package I used. Yeah. Although, of course, you need a lot more packages to actually get the data into R in the first place. Do you have any, any consulting work with this kind of 
And so anyway, it's interesting you say that in that um, I had a professor whose expertise was in autism um, and he got some data from the government that they really censored it very heavily. So we have data with autism counts in each Australian postcode, but we only know like it's 0 to 10 or 10 to 20 or 20 plus. Um, so they've kind of cut out all the information from the data. So he's been having this conversation with the Australian government for the last year and they basically just refused to give us the actual data, citing kind of privacy concerns and that stuff. So I would love to do more consulting work, but often the data doesn't just come my way. And also I think, you know, while we've got a data explosion, I also think there's this like privacy explosion where every Australian government office is using any excuse not to give us the data. Um, and so it's very difficult to do local examples, particularly with, with uh, you know, useful data sets in Australia. This, this one there, yep. those connections, yep. uh, where are they from? I mean, how do you get those connections? Is that I mean, the idea of neighbours in aerial data is a very well-known topic. So there's lots and lots of different methods of defining what's a neighbour. You can define it based on distance or you know, based on the, uh, the borders of the, of the site. So the packages in R can do this fairly easily. So this is just one particular method. But there are lots of ways of defining right. neighbours. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a geographical neighbourhood. Because it because it's quite, it's quite far apart. Yeah, so it's, not, it's clearly not based on distance, this <coughs> one. Yeah. So it might be a combination of distance or nearest neighbour or something like that. Okay. Okay, well thanks Alex for a very uh, very um, interesting one on one on special analysis in arts. So, uh, Thank you. Thank you. If anyone interested in going to the just hang around with me.